Hey there everybody, thanks for being with us for part 2 of the Napkin Animation Tutorial. Let's not pussyfoot around or beat around the bush and open up Blender. In case you didn't watch part 1 on how to prepare your textures, please click the center TV. Show no mercy to the default cube and delete it alongside all the other objects in the scene by pressing A and then X to delete all selected objects. Make sure your cursor is centered and add your camera to the scene. Clear its default rotation by pressing Alt R and then rotate it by 90 degrees around the X axis. Move it back a bit along the Y axis. Activate the Import Images as Planes add-on. The link to this add-on can be found in the description. Change the display type to Textured in the 3D window header. Now press 0 to jump into your camera view. Press N to bring up your Properties panel. In the Properties panel, search for Shading and change it to GLSL. This will make sure that we can properly view our textures in the 3D viewport. Now press Shift A and on the mesh select images as planes. Browse for your textures and import them to your 3D scene. Background first. Rotate your plane around the X axis by 90 degrees to align it perpendicular to your camera. Obviously our image is displayed as a black nothing. Simply jump to your materials tab and activate shadeless under shading. Add in the first foreground element using the same method. To properly use the alpha information of the image, switch to your Texas tab of the selected material and activate the alpha value under Influence. Also make sure to switch on Use Alpha and Image in the Texas tab. In the Materials tab, activate Transparency to be used and slide it all the way back to zero. This gives the material zero and therefore the texture 100% influence on the transparency. Now align the first foreground texture and make your own version of the nebula, scaling it the way you like it. Now duplicate your foreground plane and move it back a bit along the Y axis. Create a material duplicate by pressing the 2 next to the material's name and do the same for the texture. Change the texture to the second foreground element. Now we select our camera and define a simple movement. I'm rotating it around the Y axis only some degrees and I move it in and out along the Y axis to find the right position. Obviously we lose some of the image information. Therefore we scale all planes to fit our camera. You can change your passport too and the camera options to darken out the unnecessary space in the viewport. In the timeline go to frame 0 and press I to set your current camera position as the first frame. Jump to the end of your video and move your camera to the desired final position. Set a new keyframe at this frame. You may review your camera movement now. If you're not happy, you might change its animation curves to make it a run-through animation without a slow start and stop. Open up a new window and go to your graphs editor. Select all animation curves and press V. Now select vector to make it a linear or constant animation. In case you didn't set more than two keyframes, the animation should run smooth now, without a slow start and a slow stop. Let's add some space dust to our animation. For compositing reasons, enable layer 3 in the 3D window header and add a cube. Add a particle system to the cube and name it Dust Particles. Make both the start frame and the end frame one, so all particles are available from start to finish and just in place. The particle lifetime should be your animation time in frames. To avoid the particles falling down when playing the animation, disable gravity on the field weights. Now the particles get shot out straight, therefore disable the normal forces also. Under physics, we will add some very subtle Brownian movement. I'm using a value of 0.001 and the drag and damp value of 0.02. Finally, change the particles to be emitted inside the volume of the cube and select even distribution and random. You also don't want your emitter to be displayed when rendered. 
Disable it therefore in the render option of your particles. Now it's time to bake your particles, meaning this will save the subtle movement on your disk or in a temporary directory depending on your output settings. With the cube selected go to the materials tab and hit new. Name the material dust particles. Change it to halo and put in the values as shown. Alpha around 0 0.08 or 0 0.15, size 0 0.21 and add 0 0.1. The color will be further defined by textures. Also enable Texture, Extreme Alpha, Shaded and Soft. We will add two textures to the material. Our first texture will define the color and the alpha value. Please use the values as shown. I'm using a cloud texture with grayscale and soft. We will use a ramp to control the alpha value and color fade. The mapping is generated cube and the influence values are color 1 and alpha 0 0.19. Click show alpha to make sure if you have applied the transparency correctly. The next texture will solely affect the size. Again, it's clouds with a ramp of an alpha 0 to an alpha 0 0.01. Make it generated flat and enable size and disable color. If you render it now, you can see that the effect is too dense. Change the number of the particles from 1000 to 250. Alright, next up are the halo stars. They will add up greatly to our 3D effect. Copy our particles emitter cube and move the copy to layer 4. Let's first change the particles. Hit the two next to the particles name and name it appropriately. Set the particles number around 32 and leave both start and end at frame 1. Also disable physics and that's it already. Now let's jump to the materials tab to get our beautiful stardust. Delete the current material on your duplicated cube and add a new one. Call it appropriately. Select halo again and the input values are as follows. Alpha 0 0.2, size 0 0.012, hardness 127, add is 1 again. Of course you can experiment further. These are just my experimental values. You will see some slightly colored small dots, not quite spectacular when rendered, but we will enhance the effect in the compositor. If you want more control over the color, you can add a spherical blend texture and change its ramp values. To actually use the texture, you would have to enable texture in the materials tab, though I will mostly do it all in the compositor. I'm not going to use it for now, it's just a little tip. Now let's get ready for compositing. To make sure it all works out best, move the foreground elements to layer 2 and leave the background at 1. This is essential for a good overlay of the different image layers. Go to your scenes tab in the properties window header and make three new render layers which will be put together in the compositor. Namely, these are background, foreground, dust, and stardust. <laughs> now allocate every render layer specifically to the layer its objects are on. Left of the layer input, you can see Scene, which shows you which layers are selected in your current scene. To properly overlay the layers, we need to switch off the sky, which is in this case the viewport background. This can be done for each render layer specifically or in the render tab by changing sky to transparent. If you render now, you will probably not see all elements. This is because the compositor is not active yet. 
In the 3D window header, open up your compositor or use the Blender default compositor window as shown. Click Use Nodes and Backdrop. The compositor is now active and the backdrop ensures that we can see our composite output image once we add a few nodes to the setup. To connect any nodes, press F. For more control, you select the output of one node and drag it to the target node input. To cut a connection, simply press CTRL and draw a line over the node noodle to cut. Press V to zoom out of your backdrop image and Alt V to zoom in. Now let's overlay our render layers. Start by copying the render layer three times. You should now have four render layer nodes. Now change their respective render layer. Hit Shift A, go to search and search for the node alpha over by typing its name in the search bar. To overlay the foreground elements over the background, connect the foreground with the lower socket and vice versa. Connect it to the view node to see if you were successful. Now we overlay the dust particles over our image using the same method. Finally, we overlay the stardust also the same way as before. Keep in mind that we are using overlay here. This means that we are actually overlaying the images on top of each other. If you want to add elements like the dust in their respective distance, you would have to use a set combine. If you add an element like a spaceship to your scene and you want it to vanish behind your foreground elements but also composite it separately, you could also use an alpha over node in between or if you do not want to composite it further, just have it use the same layer and make it move behind the foreground elements. Alright, back to business. You could already render this animation, though we lack the badassness. Let's therefore actually use the compositor. Let's start with the simplest element, the background. I'm using the following nodes. Bright contrast with a brightness of 0.1 and a contrast of 0.3. A glare node with a threshold of 0.15. I like to use a non-even number for the streaks, though not obvious in this case. When working with emitter elements it helps a lot. Please use your personal preference regarding the mode, whether you use glow or streaks. I'm also using Sobble with a value of 0.1 and a lens distortion with values of minus 0.15 and 0.05. I also add a color balance node to support the color blue a bit further. When you add a new viewer node and connect it to your start node, you can review your composite. It's quite essential to go back and forth here in order to not get lost in the vast possibilities and in overdoing things although it's quite a personal preference of what you want to produce. Next up are the foreground elements. Again I use bright contrast, a glare node and a filter node with Sobble. You can just copy the nodes if you want. My color balance is the same. If you want you can also copy the whole node setup and pump both render layers through. This way you save space but you lose some control of handling each element separately. I'm going to use the node setup separately on both though. If you don't want to change any values further, you can hide the nodes by pressing H to make them smaller. It's very important to keep your workspace in order, as you already know because mommy told you so, and therefore you didn't do it on purpose, just to drive her crazy. Once again you can copy the nodes and arrange them before the dust particles are in the layer. Change the threshold to zero for your glare node. A high Sobble value may affect the image interestingly, but I'm using a value of 0.255 here, changing it to Laplace also. Find your desired color by changing the dots in the color wheel of your color balance node, so it all mixes together nicely. To finally enhance our stardust, copy the glare node and the color balance node and the filter node. Change the filter node to soften and max it out. If you want them to be bigger, adjust the size in the materials tab for your halo stars. Though I like them to be a more subtle addition. 
Now you can add another color balance node to influence the composite in total. In case you want to give it an even more different color mood compared to the original image. Once again, I'm slightly supporting the blue tones. I also add the filter node type sharpen and another bright contrast node. Play with the effects. Finally, we add a vignette to the image. Add a lens distortion, a morph node and a blur node. Change them as shown. Now you add a mix node and change its mix type to multiply. Connect the nodes as suggested and you get your composited vignette. Changing the factor value will de or increase its opacity. If you want to add black bars for further enhancement, add an image node and search for the bars texture that we provide. Though you could render it out yourself also if you want. Connect it to scale node. For render preview of 50% resolution, I'm using a Y value of 1.1. Copy the mix node and leave it as multiply. Now you should be able to see your bars. If you want to change their size further, you can simply change the Y value. The smaller the value, the more of the black will overlay the image. That's it for now. If you want to render your Nebula animation, select the file output folder, select PNG as your file tab and render the image sequence. It's up to you if you want to render a container or the images separately. As it's relatively fast to render, you may also be good to go with a container, depending on your resolution. If you want to review your work quickly, render the animation with less than 100 or 50% resolution. If you render lower than 100%, be aware though that the black bars will change respectively. After you hit animation and you render the single images per frame, you can arrange these in the video sequence editor. Therefore, you press Shift A to add your image sequence. Go to your destination folder and add the sequence. You can review the render animation now. If you want to upload your video to YouTube, I suggest to pack the sequence into MPEG4 in case you rendered in 1920-1080 resolution. So change the output files again. If you render now, the image sequence in the video sequence editor will be used and packed into MP4 container. Add your destination output. Bam guys, there's your very own Nebula animation. Congratulations, Blender Astronaut. The sky is your limit no more. Thank you everyone for staying with us. We would love to see your rendered Nebulas, so maybe share some links on our fresh new website or join our Facebook page. If you come up with a really good animation, maybe we can collect these and put them together for real for the Blender community. Thank you, I'm the Moon Man, wishing you a time, goodbye.